Welcome back to Crochet ADHD. I'm your host, Jackie. If this is your first time visiting, you're a one hit wonder. I'm glad you're here. If you are a member of the Glam Fam, a repeat offender, welcome back. You know, mm, it just doesn't seem like it's been that long. Here we come to show and fail. The sweater that I was pattern testing. The, I was so excited, y'all. It was like, it's a love story. Everything but, started out great. I had the perfect yarn. I had everything. I did my swatch, my gauge swatch, because I'm a good girl. I went through a couple of different yarns before really, really knowing that this is the one that I wanted to use. And the pattern, the main part of the sweater was just half double crochet. And, you know, because the pop of it was the sleeve. So I, I worked diligently. We had like six weeks to complete. I started it immediately. And by the second week in, I was almost finished. And then I tried it on. And I was like, hmm, this don't feel right, but whatever. I had finished, yeah, I had finished the front and the back and oh, I hadn't done the sleeves yet. And I was like, hmm, okay. And I, you know, let the designer know what was going on. And she said, well, maybe if you try to do a crab stitch, I think that's right that'll pull in the V neck because, you know, it was, well, I mean, look, see how it, it is. So then I was told to go ahead and just do the, do ribbing, or I decided to go ahead and just do ribbing around the neck to try to pull that in because again, it was sitting off my shoulders and it's not supposed to. And then I went ahead and proceeded with doing the first sleeve and the only requirement for the pattern test was to do the body and one sleeve. So I'm like, you know, I could hear the crowds cheering because I was almost done. It's like, hi, hi, hi. Then I tried it on again. The stitch for the sleeves is gorgeous. However, it's heavy. The sleeve I swear was heavier than the rest of the sweater by its, I mean like, yeah, the, the one sleeve was heavier than the whole sweater. I frogged this thing all the way back. I, I mean, basically I ripped it back to the studs, you know, because I wanted to figure out what I had done wrong. And then I redid it still ended up with the same problem. Now, I don't feel like a failure in that I did what I was supposed to do. It just did not work for me. And the yarn that the designer had chosen was um, Wool of the Andes. It's 100% wool. I was using 100% 100% acrylic, but so were some of the other testers. Both number four, but for whatever reason, I, I don't. I know I'm an oddball, but I think I still have, I think my shoulders are normal shoulders. And yeah, it, uh. so that's the show and fail. And the designer did take notes, took pictures and um, presented them to, you know, I guess like her, a brain trust of crochet designers just trying to figure out what could have possibly gone wrong. So I, I, I mean, I appreciate that she did that and that in no way was I to blame. When I told her that I had frogged it and started all over again, she said that I didn't need to stress about making the deadline because she knew that I was actively involved and I had been keeping her abreast of all the things that were happening. So I am thankful for that. But um, I was sad because it was going to be like my first sweater, you know, my first sweater of the year and again the design on the on the sleeve is gorgeous 
But if I were to make another attempt or to make a sweater like that, I feel like I wouldn't use a worsted weight, even though I know that the pattern itself required one. But I don't think a worsted weight yarn is good for something that has that kind of a detail because, I mean, it, it's basically like popcorn stitches and they're just heavy. So, you know, a V-neck and a heavy sleeve are, are just not a good combination that I have figured out, you know, through experience. So I think if it was a lighter weight yarn and it wasn't a V-neck, it could have been, I think either, either or a lighter weight yarn or a non V-neck that would have been perfect. I think I would like to be able to, so in the knitting community, there are a lot of books that are basically like design, how to design your own sweater, how to design your own top. And it's like, they show you how to piecemeal different aspects of different, what am I trying to say? Uh, like you can start off with a basic sweater form, top down or bottom up, you know, that's, that's part of the book. And then you can use this kind of a sleeve or you can use this kind of a sleeve. And again, you piecemeal all of the different aspects of garment construction to create your own garment. I don't know that I've ever seen a, a crochet book like that, but I think that would be awesome. I watch, you know, a knit sheep with a three of skeins. And that was actually something they were talking about a couple of weeks ago. The crocheter, Chris, said that um, she started looking at knitting books because knitting construction, get knitting garment construction is very much like a blueprint. And not to say that crochet isn't the same, but I think because, I think because of the way crochet garments are put together, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's like, it requires a different kind of formulation, which it doesn't seem like it should, or at least no one has stopped and said, you know, we can crochet, we can put things together in crochet similar to the way they can put together things in knitting. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And you know, this, this is I don't, another one of those brain flatulent things, but it's, I don't, it's, it's, it's interesting. Just like, you know, me, I'm trying to uh, expand my Tunisian crochet repertoire, but I'm looking at a lot of knitting patterns because, you know, the, I, I guess because I keep looking at the, at the Tunisian knit stitch. So therefore I'm thinking, okay, I just have to figure out, you know, if, if to make a, a niche, tank top or whatever, you know, it's knit this way, even if it's done in pieces, because I don't do Tunisian in the round. So if it's done in pieces, I can mimic it with crochet and I can mimic it with Tunisian crochet. I think, again, my only fear, I think the, the thing that's stopping me is just not, the fear of running out of yarn. And yeah. And I, I, I don't know how to, you know, up guesstimate or I don't know how to, yeah, I don't know how to guesstimate how much, how much yardage is required to make a Tunisian tank top. You know, if I look at the knit one and the knit one uses, I don't know, a skein, but the, and the crochet one uses four skeins, how many would the Tunisian crochet one require? Probably three, just, just because, but I don't know. So um, that, that's my fear, but yeah, the, like a blueprint for constructing garments. If you were sewing, see, and I have a lot of sewing books and there's basics that they talk about, like how to form, how to, how to, what's the word I'm looking for? How to hack a sewing pattern to fit your body specific. I know it, it can be done in sewing. It can be done in knitting. I know it can be done in crochet. But I don't, I, to my knowledge, there's no books 
on how to formulate it for your body. I, I feel like most crochet books are just pattern books. Does that make sense? And if I'm wrong, please, please let me know because I absolutely want to be wrong on this. I want, I want somebody to say, not only are you wrong, here's proof, you know, because I would love to get my hands on that kind of material, that kind of a book, something that can help me better formulate garments to fit me as opposed to it being, you know, just somebody's pattern. I hope that makes sense. Later. You know, we, we have fun. We have fun. We have joy. We have fun. We have seasons in this. Okay. We have fun here at Crochet ADHD. Absolutely. Totally. 100%. If you like this video, please like this video. I always said that. I already said that. Hmm. If you feel like sticking around, being a cool kid, being a repeat offender, join the Glam Fam. And don't forget to rock that notification bell. Until next, mm, I knew I was gonna forget something. Okay, I'm gonna boop, 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 boop in here. Okay, so I had bought the Holst yarn and I wanted to just show you what I've done with it as far as playing with a couple of the uh, different yarn types. Okay. So the first one, this, these have been uh, blocked. So this is Tunisian crochet. Let me get that. This is the um, super, super soft. This is one strand in Tunisian crochet knit stitch. Okay. And there's, there's the drape on it or the flop. Okay. Now this is the same yarn held double. And I just did four rows of double crochet. Ooh, and this one is also blocked. Boop. And it flopped. The gauge on it is about a ooh, DK weight. So the two, you know, fingering, because that's what they're considered fingering weight. But uh, two held together is considered double crochet, according, not double crochet, double knit, uh, DK. Okay, this one is the coast. And this is two strands held together. This is the one that is the wool and cotton blend. And again, there's the flop. So very lovely, yummy texture. And it is really soft even. Okay. So the super soft, which is the hundred percent wool. I've, you know, again, everybody said it's super soft, but it's not super soft. Well, it's not super soft, but it's not, not soft. Does that make sense? It's, it, it feels, I don't know. It feels like wool, but not in a bad way. And I don't think I would be averse, adverse, adverse. I wouldn't have a problem rubbing it, you know, having it against my skin. Okay. And then last, this is uh, the one that my husband got, which is the tides. And the tides is, what is tides? Tides is wool and silk. Now this is two strands held together and I just double crocheted it. Here we go. This is the color Chianti. Now this is not blocked, but look at the flop. So two strands. Yeah, I would do uh, half double crochets personally, just because I don't like how gappy or gapy this is. I did use, I think, a, a larger hook with this one also, but so yeah, you can see. So here's the three different types of Holst yarns that I've tried, which this is the super soft. This is the coast and this is the tides. And yeah, I think they're going to be amazing for crocheting. And again, this is the, the coast in Tunisian crochet.
gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's glorious. I am so thankful that I found this, that I found this company. I'm looking over here at my husband's yarn. That, that's why I keep looking over. I know. I know. Okay. Now I'm ready to go. Okay. If you like this video, please like this video. If you want to stick around, join the Glam Fam by hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to rock that notification bell. Until next time, I've been Jackie.